well to train them in private industries. The problem is, most of them, when they got the experience, they are already going out. Now, um, next up, uh, the profile of uh, those who are going out are actually uh, students. Okay, so those who are graduated from undergrad, uh, those who are able to uh, somehow get an advanced degree, they're moving out now. Okay, but the good thing about it is that a lot of people who went out of the Philippines, they're giving back. Okay, it's because probably in this age where a lot of people are, uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of generic things happening. People who want, would want to get something bespoke to them or parang giving sa kanila, and that is helping out. Okay. So, Philip, in 2011, um, we were very, very fortunate because si Mr. Benatao, ayan, mabilis ang point of. I'd like to show you one of your graphs because it is, it is very interesting that would be relevant to uh, the people from the government as well as the academia. Sir, wala pa po na project. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, uh, so Phil them when we were formed in 2012, we thought that, okay, what is the best way for us to be of service to the Filipinos? And that is for us to be a conduit of uh, experts from the U.S. to the Philippines. So as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, we implemented a lot of programs that focuses on strengthening the higher education institutions. From 2013 to 2017, we brought in 26 business professors from various universities in the Philippines. And common among them is a recommendation to strengthen entrepreneurship in higher education institutions. Now please take note that in the Philippine universities, in, here in the, in, the, uh, in the Philippines, we are still very focused on trying to teach students in a very parochial way. Kung may, teach, kung may topic on entrepreneurship is a subject, kung may topic on vocation is a subject. Well, in the US, it's very much embedded, okay? Now, um, so what, what we did was, we worked with the Commission on Higher Education. We drafted a subject called Technopreneurship 101. From 2014, we're able to, uh, we're able to roll it up this year. So starting this year, 539 Philippine universities that offer engineering programs already have Tech Apprenticeship 101. So what do we say In three to five years, the private industry or the Philippine market will really change because we would be seeing new breeds of engineers, of scientists, who would have on entrepreneurship skills. So the researches that we've been seeing earlier, it wouldn't stop in researches. It would really move forward towards commercialization of the products that they have uh, developed in the universities. Now, the Technical Research 101 is an allied engineering subject in engineering courses. However, in, uh, in most non-engineering students, it becomes a GE uh, subject. Now, why, are, why am I um, mentioning all this? Because for a lot of times, we've been working and talking to a lot of impact investors from uh, various countries. And sure enough, they're afraid of Mindanao. So, for us to be able to assure them that when they go to Mindanao, they would uh, encounter skilled people, very knowledgeable people. Now we're peppering at least the higher education institutions of um, information that would uh, assure them kumbaga, okay? So in effect, the idea is to, to, to uh, show impact investors that whatever they're seeing in their respective countries, you would see them in Mindanao. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in uh, Davao and I was really happy to meet with the Davao Inventors Group as well as Ateneo in Davao. And uh, at the time, they were still about to roll out their uh, school year. And uh, Dr. Stina and Father Tabaro said, magkakaroon kami ng uh, aeronautics uh, engineering. And that's new, because that means they will really attract um, aeronautical companies to invest in Dawa, right? Now, um, one uh, more example is that we have established technopreneurship hubs in Mindanao. So right now, we're establishing technopreneurship hub here in USDP. One in Caraga State University as well as in uh, Ateneo Davao in South Central Mindanao. So that actually addresses 
the three corridors of uh, Minda, the Northern Corridor, South Central, and Western Mindanao. So I'd be asking help from Minda if you can help us establish um, tech hubs in, in the Western uh, Mindanao area. Now, what, sorry. Okay, so uh, the Technopresion Hub is uh, a place where uh, we can spur innovation and, um, and uh, regional uh, entrepreneurship. Okay. Now, um, just recently, we went around the Philippines and we've been conducting um, roundtable discussions. Okay. So we brought four topics, or six topics, which we could be a recommendation for um, PITS as well. And that is how Philippine diaspora could help um, uh, support entrepreneurship and innovation. The first one is institutionalized entrepreneurship governance in higher education institutions. In the 90s, the focus of HDIs in the Philippines was what? Teaching or training. I know I know focus on HDIs. Research, right? Most of our universities are what? Accredited based on the research outputs. Now what we want is to push universities to take the next step forward, and that is to become entrepreneurial. Okay? Now I would like you, I would I encourage you, all of you to look at the University of San Carlos in Cebu and Batangas State University. Um, their respective universities, as well as their respective uh, deans of College of Engineering, already move forward towards entrepreneurship. Okay, so they're looking at the, the current registry of researchers and they're actually moving towards commercializing them. The next step that we're uh, focusing on is again focus on ease of doing business. I'd like to thank the current Philippine president for signing the uh, ease of doing business act. And our output is actually uh, we're implementing into the uh, DTI uh, as they develop the IRR, the Implementing Rules and Regulation of the Ease of Doing Business. One next step that uh, I think Mindanao can also benefit is if you can open data access points. For most of the researchers here, um, alam niyo naman na information is very important, right? And that also includes data access if you are doing market validation. So it's one thing we're also doing. Next is, we want to recommend that we pull uh, government experts. A lot of government experts have been sent abroad. But if you notice, a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs in the Philippines always go to the private sector to uh, look for mentors. If only government could provide that mentorship. Um, last two is private and public sector. Um, right now, we're looking at pulling high net worth of individuals to invest, including Filipinos abroad. So a lot of the impact investors in Tilden has been talking, that has been speaking to uh, uh, convince them to invest in the Philippines are actually Filipinos. For me, uh, for um, in my experience, I just came from a fellowship in Hawaii, and uh, there's a blended finance that they're doing right now. And guess who is the number one uh, investor? A Filipino, and she is Ilocana. So I need to own a more Ilocana, okay? Lastly, is what we want is to also push for more public sector investment. Um, we need to list all funding streams available for enterprises and innovators in the Philippines and it be become accessible, especially to Mindanaoan people. Um, a lot of the um, funding streams in researches and innovations are only accessible to what? The universities, NGOs, and the organized groups. But typical entrepreneurs or businessmen cannot access them. So, um, I'll share it out to you, you know, your investment flow, but we create an investment flow for Filipinos how to support uh, 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 local businesses. But um, at the end of the day, what we want is really focus on, again, um, tapping on the Filipinos for, for investment. The second is for partnership. Um, a lot of Filipinos abroad can actually facilitate partnerships from here to there. U.S. universities, U.S. businesses, um, uh, even uh, advice or mentorship for our local researchers. Picari is one example. Uh, a lot of Filipino professors in the U.S. bridge that gap of uh, bridging researches between U.S. and California, uh, Filipino and uh, California uh, universities. So that's basically it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and I can just share uh, to you my, my power presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, Neil. Oh, you mentioned about this. So this brings me to my next question for our panelists from uh, 
the Department of Trade and Industry, ma'am. Um, so how can we, particularly from the now, how can we make it more conducive to, um, you know, um, entrepreneurs, and also how can we make the regulatory environment more open to businesses, more open to innovations? Perhaps you can also share uh, your programs here, but also your, your programs uh, at the national level. I know you have this IP thing. I would rather stand as uh, my kid, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for the invite. And uh, DTI actually, uh, at a macro level, is uh, preparing a roadmap for the Philippine industrial strategy. And I think this is in its final stage. And uh, at the heart of this is competition inside and outside the country, innovation, and productivity. So since this morning, perhaps you have been hearing about technology and innovation as a driving force behind Industry 4.0. And these are disruptive technologies, and you're familiar, very much familiar with Alibaba, with the Airbnb, Grab, and Uber. The other one is on the global value chain, shifting production line to value, global value chain. Like uh, <coughs> Japanese cars used to be production type, and now it used to be made in Japan in all the factories, but now they move to Thailand. Whether it's for the US market, for Europe, for the Philippines, or any Asian country, it is made in Thailand. But the glass is from Malaysia, uh, from Indonesia. The wiring harness is from the Philippines. And the other parts from the global partners. And so those are disruptive technologies. And so we have to prepare. It's not just robotics, but uh, the face of business. And so in the, in the framework, uh, they come up with 12 priority areas. And these 12 priority areas can be, uh, you know, if I am from this region, that could be my priority. Like I discussed earlier about the uh, aerospace in Davao. Now, we, aerospace is part of the 12 priority industries, and some parts of the planes are made in Baguio and in Region 3. So it's part of the 12. So the 12 are automotive and auto parts. The wiring harness, as I mentioned earlier, the soul, lahat ng mga electronic gadgets inside the, the steel car is my, made by Yasaki Torres with 13,000 employees in Region 3. And 75% of these are women. And so we are part of the automotive and auto parts, but it's not from our region, but it's in our country. Electronics and uh, electrical, most of these are in Cebu, the Magtan area. The shipbuilding in Subic, in Cebu, and little uh, ships are in Zamboanga. Tool and die, iron and steel, we are preparing. In fact, with National Steel Up, we are facilitating the entry of another steel company we should integrate the steel company, the, the steel in the country. And right now, uh, we are discussing uh, with four major players. And that will be at the pivotal area because they need bigger space. Chemicals, the region is also into this with uh, our plant in uh, Iligan, but uh, this is not really a major thing for us. In Cagandri Oro, we have oil chem. Tourism, construction for the build, 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 furniture, garments, and the creative industry. It will be telenovela that we export. And of course, the royalties, the trademarks, and the brands. IT, BPM, and the e commerce, transport and logistics, and agribusiness. The last three, the region. Region 10 is very much into it. When you speak of transport and logistics, <coughs> no region in Mindanao can speak well 
than Kagami or, or me, Japan. Why? Geography. Look at the map and you will see. My classmates in, uh, um, my two directors who are with me in, uh, Singo in uh, Australia said, if logistics has been in the mind of the Filipinos, Singapore would not be there. Because if you look at the map, Philippines is the heart, should be the logistic hub. It should not have been Singapore. Because we are an island economy, anywhere within our shoreline can be a logistic hub. And so we have two international container ports, and our ports are being expanded to accommodate more. And when we speak of ITBPM, we are not really uh, a big player, but I think we have to support, we have some uh, big players here and a lot of MSMEs in the ITPPM, but as uh, our friend here from the private sector, Mr. Gaisan, you mentioned, we only have two uh, lines. We need redundancy when you speak of ITPPM, but we should start developing our children for this. But for Region 10, I would speak of agribusiness. This is where we are supposed to be in. Anywhere in Mindanao, we can participate in agribusiness. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We are here. So on uh, the global value chain, our pineapple, Del Monte, is a global benchmark where an American company now becomes a Filipino company. So it's 100% Filipino. And so when you speak of cocoa oil, whether it's crude, it's refined, BCO, or oil chem, that's one of our exports. And we have a lot of companies here. According to EMB, our Export Marketing Bureau, Region 10 is a benchmark. Not only a Philippine benchmark, but we are number one global. Now when we speak of rubber, it is also, we are not a big player. We are only number three or number four, Sambuanga region, Cotabato, and then we, but of all the rubber producer, producing uh, regions in the Philippines, only region 10 has a total value chain. From the small plant to production to processing to value adding and export of rubber products, and that is rubber boots for the Japanese market. Soon we will usher another rubber product company. We are in the process of facilitating because DDI for one is just to facilitate the entry of investments along this line. And so soon here. Rubber balls for tennis and paintball used to be in China, will be here in this area. We need support, I hope Minda will also consider, for a rubber testing laboratory and a rubber processing plant. Our budget for this was scrapped. We need 12 million pesos only uh, for the processing and another a figure for the laboratory because it is required of us by the company to support the entry of that uh, investor. And so our bucket known coffee, most of these are I think three straight years. We are number one in tapping for the national Arabica or Robusta and our indigenous people goes to Shadow Washington to showcase their products. That is why I'm saying the strength of the region that we need to harness is on agribusiness. Our abaca from all the provinces of the region used to be processed here and uh, further processed abroad and they become the currencies of our global trading partners. So where else can you see a region with such much uh, material or resource product to develop for the global value chain. So actually our business to industry 4.0, we need to address the root of productivity. 
producing quality planting materials that are high yielding and climate change resistant. Our coffee wine, we are one of the best. Uh, it's actually a gourmet according to our uh, copper. The productivity of our coffee is not even one half of the best coffee producing countries in the world. And so we are asked, how can we export, how can we import uh, raw material so that we can uh, produce more high yielding coffee beans. So this is one of our bottleneck. We cannot address this because this is not our forte. So we hope that uh, we will be assisted with this. But uh, if we need to address production inefficiencies through better machines, compliant to full safety requirements of the local in the international markets, our program responded to this through the shared services facilities. And uh, we have shared services facilities all over the region. And I think for this year, we have a budget of only 50 million. For Bangun Marawi, I have another 50 million. But these are machines and equipments that should support the agribusiness uh, uh, productivity. Though we are being assisted also by DA through their PRDP program, because the PRDP has a livelihood component, a business component, set up of DOST, and uh, of course, the establishment of the Food Innovation Center by DOST in this university. So our partner there is DOST and NUST, and another SSF at the Mindanao State University on Fabrication Laboratory, where we expose our students to mechanization and of course the Internet of Things and ushering them to innovation and technology. We requested MHUIIT at that time to help uh, our MSMEs in this area on innovation, of which we also did, and in fact, one of the most successful fab labs in the country is that of MHUIIT. They have robotics that uh, went to Singapore, and uh, we also assist them exposure trips, and right now, uh, when it comes to SME Roving Academy on entrepreneurship, we got 100 slots from Jackma Foundation to assist us for entrepreneurship in China. So the 100 slots for innovation and technology on entrepreneurship is for across the country. So we hope that we can get our business people to join the trip, especially if they are involved in the digital economy. And so the region actually has a lot of entry. Our local developers were sent to Singapore, and I am happy that uh, uh, we are partnering with the right people in the region. So earlier, Mr. Emil mentioned that uh, TPI should get the uh, government should be in the coaching program. We are in the coaching program, but I will tell you, I came from business myself. And government is not in the, the authority for business. They are all academic background, but business people should help us in the coaching program. That is why we engage the group of Joey Concepcion. Most of these are business people who have done research and extension, research and development. They have undergone bankruptcy and ups and downs, and they're the ones who mentor most of our MSMEs. And so far, I would like to report that scaling up is really good with business people as your mentor, not government. And so, uh, I think that's all, and uh, with the ARPA, Mr. Chang san mentioned about uh, uh, the two, uh, the, the uh, duopoly, and uh, 
One of the findings of the art of gamers was it is very expensive to put up even one, you know, the one post of uh, telecommunication, and it will take more than a year. And we hope that the new Arta law will usher more cell sites and more players in the digital economy. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. So you quickly mentioned about climate change, and uh, I think this is a good segue to my next question, which is the role of fire technologies in uh, disaster risk reduction and management. So, uh, Dr. Abubakar, I think the Philippines, as we know, is one of the most um, vulnerable areas to climate change, which really affects Venezuela. Uh, I, I recall this uh, very strong typhoon in 2012, Boba typhoon. Yeah, I, I forgot the local name, but um, how can we harness or yeah, how, 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 how can we harness fire technologies in, in uh, addressing environmental issues such as climate-related uh, disasters? And perhaps you can also share local initiatives also uh, being done by uh, uh, implemented by the Environmental Management Bureau, which you are having. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. I hope some of the uh, uh, climate change that will get this year. I think I'm just keep on this matter. Uh, first of all, uh, anyway, I have 10 minutes. First of all, I'm thanking uh, the group for inviting me this, uh, this uh, Internet Public uh, Policy Research Forum. And uh, just my suggestion about the present presented innovations and uh, uh, inventions, there must be a need for a proper collaboration between the policy makers, the uh, academic or the inventors, and the industries or the end users, just to make use of our things. This is how I, this is my formula, simple formula. For the uh, academic, you should uh, retrofit your curriculum to the needs of industries. What is happening right now, you are producing an engineer which does not fit, it needs more training before it can be admitted in the industry. So you have to retrofit together. And at the same time, there are very good innovations that is not the present policies to be adapted. And I have uh, forward will uh, tell you some of the innovations we have made in recent time, which until now for 10 years ago I've been there, but it's not a policy. It did not become a policy. First of all is um, on questions of um, uh, monitoring the emissions of company online and uh, just to protect the health of the people here. And 10 years ago, I already made, uh, made a policy here in Region 10 for the coal-fired uh, power plant to monitor them online. So I'm using the sense and direct to my office and I'm monitoring it online on 24 hours. So therefore, people are safe as far as the uh, emission of industry is concerned, but until now, sorry to tell you, that it did not become a policy. Maybe one of the reasons the pioneer is a property and the money that would have considered it sometimes. Another thing is uh, if you hear the uh, pronouncement of the president about global warming, if I still remember, I hope I can still uh, uh, paraphrase it, he said that uh, global warming or climate change is what about private concern, but it must be on a fair and equitable equation. It must not stymie our industrialization. And I think that's also the need. You've been sort of some steel companies that are sprouting here. But the question is, can we do that? We are a signatory to Paris Agreement. And what it does mean, we have to reduce our carbon footprint by 70% in the year 2013, that is, in the early month. Can we do that? I myself, in uh, modesty aside, I was doing the solution 10 years ago, but until now it has become a policy. I presented this in the core business and policy forum in Makati, I think, one year ago, and it was appreciated, but no action has been taken. Well, first of all, this is my concept. I am requiring all companies uh, I started a bit stay uh, 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, to sequester all their carbon emissions so as not to contribute to global warming. 
but I did was there was no policy. And in my own persuasiveness, persuasive uh, nature, maybe I, 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 I was able to persuade that because it is a uh, uh, European firm that at least they can understand my language and my system. I let them sequester all their coordination. How I do this? I computed that 400 tons per hectare with, uh, uh, without any, that is only the basis. And they are now planting and maintaining and protecting 1,200 hectares of forest land for 25 years at no cost to the government. And that is the more power. If you happen to be there, it is there. Another thing is I read this IPC, the Missouri uh, Power Plant, to sequester the carbon. And that is a Filipino firm. I was not able to force that. He only promised me 700 hectares. <coughs> plant, maintain, and protect. And the jet power, he promised me 2,000 hectares of forest land. And my policy is, and I'm recommending this, a solution to this. If the government may have adopted the policy to let the companies, I'm referring to the environmental petrol projects, to sequester their own carbon, then we can industrialize at no increase on that we are not contributory to global warming because we are sequestering our own carbon emission. And if we let all these uh, present industries to sequester also their carbon emission, then we can, all our forest land will be planted at no cost to the government. And we can comply with the Paris Agreement. How? That is already about reducing the industrialized at no cost, no additional carbon emission. Secondly, let those uh, industries now who are, are not sequestering uh, the carbon to sequester, then there will be a uh, much, much uh, uh, reduction of our carbon footprint. And another thing is we have to use uh, electric cars for major thoroughfares. And by that then we can reduce the carbon footprint and we have a beautiful Philippines yet we are industrializing. That is my concept. But until now, nobody has acted to it. They said it is hard to implement, but I was doing it 10 years ago, but it was not realized. And that is the system, and I hope before I retire, and I'm soon to retire two years from now, it's going to be adapted as a policy in the natural, in the nation. If it can be started and challenging the MINDA to start it here in, the, in Mindanao and make it work nationwide. Thank you very much.
So let me begin by uh, sharing with you by first uh, focusing on what the REC can do within Region 10. And then uh, towards the uh, later part of my presentation, then I will share also what it can do to help uh, Mindanao be ready for the fire. So the REC, uh, at least then, uh, in our case, can help and ensure that there will be synergy of efforts helping Northern Vietnam uh, keep up with uh, the uh, industrial revolution. Why? Because it has the mandate, it has the structure, processes, and most recently, the context within which the Council does its uh, planning function. So, uh, the legal basis of the RDC is I uh, ordered 3 to 5 uh, series of 1996 and one of its functions is uh, being the highest uh, development policy making body in the region is to coordinate the preparation, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of short, medium term and long term regional development plans, investment programs, uh, special development plans including the formulation of policy recommendations. <coughs> So with respect to context, parang we could say that uh, we had a good, uh, uh, we had, we had a good basis in uh, contributing to this fire. Uh, uh, um, by virtue of uh, presenting to the case uh, executive order number five series of 2016, we have adapted the long-term vision, 25-year uh, vision, this ambition 2014. And it says that by 2040, the Philippines shall be a prosperous, predominantly middle class society where no one is poor. Our people shall live uh, long and healthy lives, be smart and innovative, and shall live in a high class society. So, the attribute of our Filipinos uh, by 2040 is we must be smart and innovative. So, it fits well with the port. Uh, uh, industrial revolution. So that's what the context that the uh, the RTC is uh, uh, basing on its development plan. So as I say, the RTC 10 in the strategic this plan function are regular and special committees. So we have a macro uh, and development administration committee, we have social development committee, we have economic development committee, and lastly, we have the uh, Infrastructure and Utilities Development Committee. And also, it has uh, special committees like uh, <coughs> the Regional Research Development and Innovation Committee. So this is one of the most uh, relevant uh, in terms of uh, getting us ready into this uh, port, industri uh, port industrial um, revolution. So meaning, the IEC has the function, it has the structure, and of course the uh, suitable context to work with. So we have a future period that the topics have been presented. We could say that uh, shaping Milano's future, or particularly in order Milano's future in the era of port uh, industrial revolution is multifaceted. And also, that it, as the revolution itself is multifaceted and multisectoral. So this means that the port industrial revolution involves subject matters not only about science and technology, but it involves about uh, macro and development administration, social development, and infrastructure. And of course, starting across these sectors is the science, technology, and innovation. All of these subject matters are covered by the IDC 10 committees. And so this the structure, the functions of the committee, and the Portful Council can help uh, in uh, getting the region ready for this port industrial revolution. So, we, um, the membership of the RDC-10 and its sector committees are multi-agency, national and local, and of course including both the public and private and civil society. This uh, set fits well with our World Economic Forum recommendation that the response to the port industrial revolution must be integrated and comprehensive involving all the stakeholders uh, from the public and private sectors to the academia and civil society. And this video could be found at the RBC. 
So what matters is that's the leadership, the membership, and of course uh, the secretariat that will uh, uh, that will help this uh, IDC become a uh, big team in uh, with relation to this fire. Of course, uh, we would admit that uh, in our recent development plan, this uh, fire is not actually being in focus. So we are thankful that we have this forum so that the Secretariat and even the members of the RDC, of course, um, we are here at the Punya, the Vice Chairman of the uh, Economic Development Committee, and we have also the Director uh, of Upakara, also member of the Economic Development Committee. So that would be our for updating our, uh, even the, the national and the regional level, we have to update uh, the, uh, the so called uh, medium term updating of the regional development plan. And we would, uh, that would be an opportunity for us to integrate that into the plan, the policies, strategies, programs, activities, and projects needed for the region to adapt to the changes and enjoy the benefits brought about by the fire. So uh, we, we are done with how the RDC can uh, help uh, with respect to FIR at the regional level. Then how RDC could help at uh, the Mindanao wide level. So at the Mindanao wide level, there are two bodies that are uh, coordinating the planning and investment programming and development planning. That is the focus we have Minta. And the second one is the Regional Development Committee under the NEDA board. So these are the bodies to which the IDC can relate. So Samita, the governing board is uh, composed of uh, some of the members of the uh, governing board are the IDC chairpersons uh, island wide. So uh, we speak to the NEDA board, the uh, Regional Committee, for Mindanao because uh, this uh, uh, NIDA Board Regional Development Committee is present in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So its uh, island grouping is uh, have established this uh, NIDA Board Regional Development Committee. So uh, practically uh, the relationship between NIDA and NIDA Board uh, Regional Development Committee and MINDA is that MINDA is more on um, Although they have also these policy concerns, but uh, sa practice, mula kita na ito ng MINDA is more on coordinating doon sa mga investment program or if, uh, coordinating implementation of uh, programs that would affect uh, more than one region or the entire Mindanao. So in the case of NIDA Board uh, Regional Development Committee, which also uh, include the RDC chair persons in that uh, committee, is more on development policies. So more, uh, that's the two, uh, somehow the practical distinction between uh, NIDA Board uh, Regional Development Committee for Mindanao and the Mindanao Development Authority. So together with the chairpersons of the rest of Mindanao RDC, the chairperson of the RDC team member can help contribute into the uh, in, uh, development planning or investment programming at the uh, Mindanao wide level with uh, MINTA and also with respect to policy, it, could, uh, it is also a member to this uh, NEDA board, uh, regional development for Mindanao area. So, uh, that uh, is my presentation. So, yes, uh, the RTC we recognize that uh, it, it could help uh, in harmonizing uh, various activities related to this uh, port uh, industrial revolution. Thank you. What an appropriate way to wrap up this session. I think there is no more time for an open forum. So uh, what what we would just would like to uh, to uh, impart, the message we would like to impart in this session by convening this multi-sectoral uh, panel is that no one sector can do it alone. There has to be uh, the engagement of the different sectors of society. Cross-sectoral collaboration is very important as well as a pool of Mindanao or uh, should I say a whole of nation approach uh, in order uh, for us to take advantage of the advantages of the port industrial revolution as well as mitigate the risks arising from uh, disruptive, disruptive technologies. So at this point, please join me in thanking our panelists for uh, their very interesting, very interesting so at this point, I would like to uh, give the floor to our uh, 
Bachelor of Ceremonies. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, Ma'am Sheila. The time now is 6.30 to be exact. The last part of the program is a ceremonial signing and closing ceremony. So do we have the assistance of the technical staff? Physical arrangement committee to install the chair and table for the signing. signifies the linkage and collaboration between NRCP and Hilda. A round of applause, please. Thank you so much.
World Economic Forum, no? Sino sabi dito? Sabi ni Amira Yayaki, founder and chair at Ramaz Pausala. The fourth industrial revolution should be a revolution of values. This was highlighted kanina, no? Many speakers started with the values, among others. And si Anand Mahindra, chair and managing director of Mahindra Mahindra. Sabi niya, the opportunity to improve the quality of life is the biggest business opportunity going. No? So, it's not about ano lang, no? the government, but really the public private sector partnership. And we are here, which was the, the, the key message of Ma'am Yaya, or Maya, of uh, NCRP. Yung women's participation. Sinasabi mo, pero ang sinabi ni Christine Lagarde, I am managing director, we've heard a lot about the Internet of Things, I think we need an Internet of Women. And ito ang mas matundi. We need a Minister of Future. So I think we have so many Ministers of Future na nagawa na yan, mga champion sponsors. So I think we have created our future today. Because what we want to see is that Di ba yung set ko kanina ng umaga? The top 10 nations in terms of innovation are the following. Si Korea, the most innovative country. Sweden, most number of university education level. Singapore, excellent education system. Germany, high sex program. Japan, medium-sized industries driving innovation. Switzerland, world class research institutes. Denmark, renewable energy. Finland, knowledge management. France, disruptive technology innovation and Israel, sinabi kanina yung Mama Ramonet, yung sa Startup Nation, they invested much in research for development. So what we will do, we have created our future, di ba sinabi ko? And we will change that with, who knows, 2014, 2015, we'll be the leading island in terms of the public. So, the bottom line is that yung pag-harvest natin ng fire, I, we need to rise. But in rising, we need to make an own packet of the price. So we have to be wise. No? But my bottom line, hindi yan sa auto, meto, may bottom line, ang phone pick up the planet. Ang ibig sabihin niya, sinabi nga ni Ieto kanina, ni Dr. Quirino, we have to revolutionize innovation and scientific education. But in terms of all of this, we need policy research in innovation, creativity and education, and wise. We will be wise in working over in synergizing education. That was the piece kanina ng ating fire. So we have to keep the fire burning. We have to innovate now. So congratulations to Ali Hal. Special thanks for the, the women behind, no? Si Dr. Sheila Shar, at saka yung counterpart sa nito si Milo. These are the two who really shepherd the this life and to his successful completion tonight. Again, on behalf of Mr. Kalonto, and the Secretary, and the whole of the members ng grupo na to, salamat and congratulations to Sam. Thank you so much for your time. And that culminates the...